Today we're going to be talking about systems of equations. Now what a system of equations is, is where we have multiple unknown variables and we can set up those multiple unknown variables into multiple equations and then be able to solve for multiple variables. So far, and a lot of times, you've only seen a single variable in a single equation we can solve. If you have two variables in an equation, try to solve for one of them, you're going to have the other variable in your solution. You're not going to get a, a single number out. So in order to solve for multiple variables, we need multiple equations. So let's take a look at a scenario. Going back to Hector and Yolanda, we talked about this when we were comparing linear and geometric or exponential functions. So you have Hector who takes a job with a local company at the starting salary of $38,500 and he gets a $1,000 raise each year he is employed. Yolanda gets a job and her starting salary is $36,700 and she will get a 3% raise each year, which means she's getting 103% of her previous year's salary. And so to set up or to write out the equations for each of their salaries, so those salary functions, you have Hector, which is a linear function with that y-intercept or that starting salary of 38,500 plus the slope is 1,000. It's his raise each year times x, where x is the number of years. And then Yolanda's is exponential. So she's starting with that base, or that initial value is the 36,700 times the multiplier, the R, we often called it, or the B when we were looking at exponentials, this is 1.03 to the power of X. So what we have here is technically a system of equations. We have two equations where we have two variables, a Y and an X. So this is a system of equations. And the important part here is that in these two equations, you have the two variables X and Y are representing the same thing. So in Hector's salary function, you have X is representing time and y is representing salary and that's the same representation that those variables have in Yolanda's salary function and a very natural question to ask is when are these two salaries equal when will these two people be paid the same amount and to do that we're trying to solve the system and that's what it means if you're ever asked to solve the system you're essentially solving for the variables of when these two equations are equal to each other and so one way of doing that is with graphing and with graphing you're essentially looking for the intersection because the intersection is when the two functions are equal to each other or when the outputs are the same. And sometimes there will not be a solution. Sometimes functions or graphs do not intersect. And when there is no intersection, then we say that there is no solution. In general, though, we like to solve systems using algebra because then we can more definitively find the solution. Sometimes with graphing, you're essentially playing a guessing game. And so if you were to get graph these two equations on the same xy plane, you'd end up getting the solution is around eight years and that salary is about 46,500. So that's when they'd be getting paid approximately the same salary. And we, and we can get that idea from graphing. And it's a very good skill to be able to do this with variables and to do it algebraically. So here we have two examples of looking at the graphing solution. So we have some linear functions here, x plus one and then two x minus one. So we can graph both of those. And if you graph both of those in Desmos, just to get an idea for what we're actually solving for here. So looking at these two linear functions graphed in Desmos, we have that the intersection is right here where the x is two and the y is three. So when x is two, these functions have the same output. So the solution to the system is the point two, three. And in general, when we write solutions to systems, we will write them as an ordered pair, or we'll see later, we'll have multiple variables might be an ordered triple. And when we graph the second system of equations, we see we have an intersection here that's not as nice of a number, but that intersection is about negative 0.75 and about 2.25. So negative three quarters and about two and a quarter. So when the input is about negative 0.75, 
these two functions, these two lines will have the same output. So let's draw that and write that out on our sheet. So just to give a general sketch of what these functions look like, you have in the blue, we'll make this one blue, the x plus one, that's a function that looks like this, slope is one, and it's just a vertical shift up by one. And then you have the other function, which has that y-intercept at negative one, but it's a bit of a steeper slope. And so the intersecting point right here is the point when x is two and y was three. So the solution is two comma three, or we could write it as x is equal to two and y is equal to three. So whether you write it separately, this is what x is, this is what y is, or you can write it as the point. And on the other one, we'll make the negative 3x the blue, which goes through the origin, but it's a pretty steep slope, and it's a negative slope, so it goes down like that, and these are just rough sketches. And the other one is x plus 3, so that's just a vertical shift up by 3, so it's got a y-intercept of 3, and it's a slope of 1, so it looks something like that. And we have this intersecting point right here, which had the x value of negative 0.75 and the y value of 2.25. And so that solution we would write as negative 0.75 comma 2.25. So we have a couple different techniques or tools for solving these systems of equations algebraically. One way is with substitution. Now with substitution, what we're doing is we often solve for one variable. We get one variable by itself, and then we have... For instance, in this case, y is equal to x plus 1. So we know what y is equal to. And we're trying to see when these two solutions or when these two systems are equal to each other. So we're trying to combine these two equations into one. So if we have y is equal to x plus 1, well, we have y in the other equation. So we could just substitute or plug in x plus 1 for y in the other one. So take a look. We have y is equal to x plus 1. And then we're substituting that in here because this is y in the other equation. So we write this as x plus 1. This is what we're substituting in. This is coming from the first equation. And then this is equal to what we have on the right-hand side, 2x minus 1. And so now from here, this is an equation with one variable. And that's the goal is to get an equation with one variable. And now that we have that, we can solve for x. So to solve for x, we want to get all the real numbers on one side and then get all the x terms on the other side. So let's be brave and do this all in one step. So let's get the real numbers without the x onto the left side and let's get all the x's to the right side. So we will add 1 to both sides to cancel that out right there to add to 0. And then to get the x from the left side to the right side, we subtract x here. So that cancels or, or adds to zero and then we have to do the same thing to the other side and so what we have on the left hand side with the real number part that's one plus one which is two and then on the right hand side this is two x minus x or one x and so you just have x left over so there we go that's one half of the solution we'll give this a dotted box because it's just about the solution but we still have to find the y value so this x value is the x value of when these two equations are equal to each other in other words it's the x value when the y values are the same or it's the x value of the intersecting point lots of different ways to say it so what we do now is we plug x equals 2 into either equation So it doesn't matter which one we plug it into, we should get the same thing at the end of the day. Let's plug it into the first one because there's less work to do there. All it is is just adding one. So we have here, this is y. So this is from the first one here, we're using that first one. This is y is equal to x, which we're substituting in for two, and it is plus one. So all we have to do is just add 2 plus 1, and you get y is equal to 3. And so this is the other part of the solution here. You have when x is 2, y is 3. And so if you plug that into the other equation, you should get the same thing out. And we do, if you plug in 2 into the other equation, you get 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 1 is 3. So this x value is the x value when 
you get the same y value out or when the two equations are equal to each other. So the point of the solution in an ordered pair is the point 2, comma, 3. And let's try it out for this other one here. Now, if you feel confident with this, you can pause right here and try it out on your own and compare what we get here. So taking a look at this one, we have y is equal to negative 3x. So the negative 3x is what y is equal to. So we can just plug that in for the y here. And so plugging that in for y, we have negative 3x. This is what we're plugging in to the bottom equation. And this is equal to, on the right-hand side of the bottom equation, is x plus 3. Now from here, we want to get the x's on one side and then everything without x on the other side. So we already have negative 3x on its own over there. So let's just move the negative x on the right-hand side to the left. And we do that by subtracting x. So that adds to 0. Subtract x on the other side to keep it equal. So we have negative 3x minus x is negative 4x. And this is equal to 3. And now to solve for x, we want to undo the multiplication of negative 4. So we divide by negative 4. That divides to 1. And then divide by negative 4 on the other side. And we have x is equal to negative 3. 3 fourths. And so this is one solution, or it's one part of the solution. We have the x value, now to get the y value. And this is true for any functions. If you have the x to get the y, you just plug in the x. And we can do that into either of these. It might be easier to plug it into the first one because it's just a quick multiplication there. So to find y, we now plug x equals negative 3 over 4 into either equation. So we're going to find y now. And we're going to do y is equal to negative 3 times what we're plugging in is negative 3 over 4. And this will give us the y value. And so negative 3 times negative 3 over 4, you can think of negative 3 as negative 3 over 1. And multiplying fractions, you just multiply tops with tops, bottoms with bottoms. So you have y is equal to negative 3 times negative 3 in the numerator is 9 over 1 times 4 is 4. And so this is the other part of the solution here. And so the ordered pair is negative 3 over 4, comma, 9 over 4. Now, if you take a look at these two systems of equations, these are actually the same two systems of equations that we were looking at on the previous page where we were graphing and finding the solution. So we got the same thing algebraically on the first one, 2, comma, 3. On the second one here, we got it in fraction form. But if you put these fractions into decimals by just doing negative 3 divided by 4 and 9 divided by 4, you should get the same values as the decimals that we got on the last page, which is negative 0.75 and 2.25. So this is solving systems of equations or finding the solutions with substitution by getting a variable by itself and plugging it into the other equation. Another method is with elimination. And now with elimination, we're essentially lining up the two equations and combining like terms. But we want to combine like terms in such a way that we eliminate one of the variables. So the goal is to eliminate one of the variables. And let's put that in this blank here. So right now, if we were to add or combine like terms on this system of equations, you'd end up doing 2x plus 4x, 3y minus y, 5 plus 10. Now, none of the variables, the x nor the y, would eliminate or would cancel out. So we need to multiply one of these equations such that we end up canceling. So like, for example, if we want to cancel the x's, we have right now 2x plus 4x. That adds to 6x. That We need them to add to 0. And so we want to turn the 2, looking at the coefficients, we want to turn the 2 into something where we add it with 4x or the 4, and it'll add to zero. Well, if you have 4x to get zero as the sum, you need to add negative 4x to the 4x. And so we want to turn the 2 in the first equation into a negative 4. So to do that, you just multiply by negative 2. So if you multiply this by negative 2, and we have to do it to all parts of the equation, so multiply everything to keep it all equal because we need equality from what we started with, and so multiply everything by negative 2, and you're left with this is negative 4x, and then negative 2 times 3y is negative 6y, and then negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. 
So this equation is coming down here, and now we're going to combine like terms, or we're going to add these two equations together. And so what we get is 4x minus 4x, well, that adds to 0. That was the goal. So we eliminated x here. And the rest of the variables, or the rest of the terms, we have negative y plus negative 6y. This is negative 7y is equal to 10 plus negative 10 is 0. Now, a lot of times people will see, oh, negative 7y is equal to 0. So then that means that there is no solution. But no, there is. With 0 is a number we can solve for y still. We can get y by itself. To get y by itself, just regular, you have negative 7y here, so negative 7 is multiplying the y, so undo the multiplication of negative 7 by dividing by negative 7, those divide to 1, and then divide by negative 7 on the other side, and then you have 0 divided by negative 7 is still 0. So then you have the solution of y is y is equal to 0. So this is one half of the solution is y is equal to 0. When y is 0, that's when you have these two equations intersecting at the height of zero. So we want to figure out what the x value is. So to find x, you plug in that y is equal to zero. And it doesn't matter which one we do it to, we're going to get the same solution no matter what. Let's just use the first equation, the 2x plus 3y is equal to 5. So we're plugging in zero for y. So we have 2x plus 3 times the zero for y is equal to 5. And now we're just solving for x. We have a single variable in this equation, and we can solve for that variable. So this 3 times 0, let's just write that out. That's 0. So this is 2x is equal to 5. So it simplifies a little nicer. And now to get x by itself, divide by 2. That divides to 1. Divide by 2 on the other side. And we have x is equal to 5 over 2. So this is the x value of the solution. So the solution itself is the ordered pair 5 halves is the x and 0 is the y. Now in this other one, we have x plus 2y is equal to 3, and then 3x plus 6y is equal to 9. Now we want to eliminate one of the variables. Last time we did it with x, so let's try to do it with y this time. If you look at when you do 2y plus 6y, combine those like terms, well, you get 8y, which does not eliminate the y. So to eliminate the y, we want to multiply the first equation. And usually I'm picking the first equation here because the 2 is smaller than the 6. It's kind of like getting common denominators or finding a common multiple between these two. Luckily, 2 is a factor of 6, so we can just multiply 2 by 3 to match it with the 6. But in particular, we want it to cancel, so we multiply by negative 3. So we multiply both sides of this equation by negative 3. And let's see what we get out here. So negative 3 times x, that's negative 3x. Negative 3 times 2y is negative 6y. And negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. And then combining like terms, you have 3x minus 3x is 0. 6y minus 6y is 0. And then on the right-hand side, you have 9 plus negative 9 is 0. So what you end up with here is 0 equals 0. Well, okay, what does that mean? There's no more variables. We can't solve for x. We can't solve for y. We eliminated both variables. Since 0 equals 0 is a true statement, think about when 0 equals 0. Well, 0 always equals 0. So what that means is that it doesn't matter what value you plug into x or into y. The input or the output will always be the same between these two functions. I mean, these two functions are actually the exact same function. One it just looks different, but they are both representing the same line. So these are two lines that are essentially right on top of each other. And so because this is a true statement, so there are infinitely many solutions. If it were to say something like, 3 is equal to 0, that is not a true statement. So you would say that there are no solutions. So infinitely many solutions versus no solutions. Since this is a true statement, we get infinitely many solutions.